So in this video, I'm going to use the logic that I showed you in the previous video, 2 pi or not 2 pi. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to apply that to the tangential velocity of the ohm particle, okay, of the model that I am affectionately referring to as the ohm particle. So um, the tangential velocity is the linear speed of any object moving along a circular path. A point on the outside edge of the turntable, the thing which is turning, moves a greater distance in one complete rotation than a point near the middle. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. A point out here in one cycle is going to travel a further distance than a point closer to the middle. Okay, so this is known as tangential velocity. This is the velocity, let's say at this point here, if this disc is spinning at a certain frequency, this would be the velocity an object would have. If it were to suddenly jump off the turntable, it would fly in this direction at this velocity. And so that is the meaning of tangential velocity. It is um, the velocity at a certain point along the, um, the turntable at a certain radius. As you can see, the tangential velocity equation is generally written in terms of angular frequency for obvious reasons. Uh, because we are moving uh, in an angular fashion, it makes sense that mainstream would want to uh, report everything in terms of angular frequency. But that need not be the case. That need not be the case. So here is what I recommend doing. What I do is I expose the 2 pi parameter, the 2 pi term, okay, by uh, separating out the angular frequency into 2 pi times frequency. And so here you see it is exactly the same equation only I am separating out the 2 pi term, okay? Uh, and at this point, I am grouping the 2 pi term with the frequency term, and that equals to angular frequency. But instead, what I want to do is I want to group the 2 pi term with the radius frequency. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, I already have my frequency term. I have my frequency, ter fre frequency term. Everything is in terms of frequency at this point. And so that 2 pi has to be grouped with something. And so now I am grouping it with the radius term. And as you may well know, uh, the radius times 2 pi is the circumference of a circle. So now I have the tangential velocity equation written in terms of the circumference of the circle. And so this is what I'm going to write. I uh, use a circle for the circumference of the circle. And uh, so now I have um, these equations. I, I inserted the tau symbol here because this is, this is how it's usually expressed in mainstream in the language. So uh, the tangential velocity is equal to all these things, uh, but it is also equal to the circumference of a circle which is spinning, so this would be the outside edge. Um, the outside the circumference of the biggest uh, part of this turning circle and the frequency in cycles per second. Okay, so this actually looks much simpler to me. I don't have to write 2 pi at all. I am in the frequency domain like I want to be and the only parameter I need to now find if I know the frequency is the circumference of the spinning object. So now let's do unit analysis, modified unit analysis on this guy here. Okay, so we know that the equation has to um, has to return the, the, um, the units of velocity because the answer to this equation is the speed of light. And so we know that the, um, the units have to, uh, to work out to meters per second. So that's pretty straightforward. Next, we are going to um, write down the units for this value here. So this is the circumference of the circle times the frequency. Now we know the units for frequency are cycles 
per second, but what are the units of the circumference of a circle? Well, we know for sure that it's going to be in meters because we're talking about a length value here and length values in the standard, uh, international standard is in meters. But so you would think that the units for uh, the circumference times frequency would be meters times frequency. But as you can see in modified unit analysis, we have a problem here. We have a problem here because uh, the, the units are not balanced. And so this is one of the revelations I had when I was when I switched from the rad domain of the radius to the domain of the circumference because of the mistake I made in my previous videos. I came to realize that these are in fact the units I should be using. The units of the circumference of a circle is uh, meters per cycle. Meters per cycle. Okay, so the circumference of a uh, you know, an object of my object of my own particle, which is a, a spinning object uh, with a boundary condition. Okay, the, um, the units of this boundary condition, these, this outer circle is meters per cycle, meters per cycle. It's got the units. So in modified unit analysis, the units of meters per cycle are the units of wave length. So this is in fact a wavelength. It is analogous to a wavelength. It is almost exactly the same as a wavelength. And this is why it's got units. The circumference of this spinning object has the units of meters per cycle. This is not any old meters. This is the meter of one complete cycle. This is the distance a particle on this outer edge here. This is the distance it would travel in one complete cycle. So the units of the circumference of my system here are meters per cycle, okay, meters per cycle. So this can be easily seen, um, the relationship between circle and wave, okay, between cycle uh, in this, in the domain of circle and cycle in the domain of the wave can be easily seen with this diagram here, okay. So what this diagram is showing is that once around the circle, okay, is analogous to one wave length. So when it's up at the top here, it's a peak over here. And then when it gets to the top, it's a peak over here again. And so you can clearly see um, the relationship between the circle and the wave um, in this, in this uh, uh, animated GIF here. And so I think this is an important point. Um, and this justifies uh, me using meters per cycle as the units for the circumference of the circle of my system here, which is a spinning system, which has a boundary condition out here, which has a tangential velocity, I am saying, uh, of the speed of light. And I will be showing that in a minute. Okay, so keep this picture in mind. Uh, um, keep this picture in mind uh, at all times. No, keep this picture in mind when we're uh, talking about the circumference of the circle and realize that uh, it is also a wave length. So next we're going to apply the tangential velocity equation of this system here. Okay, we're going to apply it to the electron and to the proton. So let's start with the electron. Okay, the uh, tangential velocity of the electron, of this system as an electron, is calculated using the Compton frequency of the particle. Now, if, if you don't know this already, I'm pretty sure I've done this before, the Compton frequency of a particle is the mass of the particle divided by the, um, the quantum of mass the quantum of mass, the quantum of kilogram from my specification. And the quantum of mass is in the order of 10 to the minus 51 kilograms. So you take that, divide it, uh, divide the electron, the mass of the electron by the quantum of mass, and you get the Compton frequency. So, and that's what I do for all the particles. The mass divided by a quantum of mass is equal to the Compton, the frequency of the particle, which is also the Compton frequency. Now, the Compton frequency has to be calculated uh, if you're using um, Planck's constant, you have to use non-reduced Planck's constant. Uh, for everything in my specification, I use non-reduced Planck's constant and the circumference of the circle. 
and or the one complete cycle of a wave. So uh, when you plug in the Compton frequency and the Compton wavelength, okay, so here I'm saying that the uh, Compton wavelength, let me get rid of that, the Compton wavelength is the circumference of the circle, not the charge distance like I was saying before. And so the, um, the, Com the Compton wavelength, non-reduced Compton wavelength, is equal to the cir circumference of the circle. The frequency is the uh, mass of the particle divided by the uh, quantum of mass. And when you do that, you get the, um, the speed of light. At least I hope so. Um, Bill, if you can, you know, verify this for me, I'd really appreciate it. Now, I checked this and this is working and you do get the um, velocity of light when you plug these two parameters into this equation. Okay, so now we're going to do the proton. So I'm going to use the same equation for the proton. Um, I'm going to use the, uh, the Compton frequency, the mass of the proton divided by the quantum of mass from my specification. Uh, and, and you get in the order of 10 to the 23 cycles per second. Okay, so when you plug that into this equation and the Compton wavelength, the proton Compton wavelength from the international standard, okay, 1.21409 times 10 to the minus 15, 1.21409 times 10 to the minus 15. When you plug this into here and this into here, you also get the speed of light. So the tangential velocity of the system I'm describing here is always the speed of light. So now I'm going to do one more uh, hypothetical particle. We know electrons exist, at least we're pretty sure they do. We know that protons exist, at least we're pretty sure they do. So um, what I'm going to do is propose uh, a particle that we don't necessarily know exists. I'm going to apply some logic to the tangential velocity and, um, and propose a, a particle that is much smaller than both the proton and the electron. And so these are the parameters, these are the parameters that I'm proposing for the system. Okay, the, um, the frequency that I'm using is the, basically it's the Planck frequency. It's basically the inverse of um, Planck time using Planck's constant and non-reduced Planck's constant. So the inverse of Planck's, Planck time uh, when calculated using H and not H bar is this value. So I'm going to pretend that my own particle has that frequency because that frequency must have physical meaning because of the Planck, the way the Planck natural units work. And so it may or may not be true, but I'm going to speculate that it's true that this has physical meaning. I'm assigning physical meaning to it. This is the, um, the spin rate in cycles per second of this own particle. And so uh, for the um, outer circumference of the circle, I'm going to use non-reduced non -reduced Planck length. So I'm injecting Planck time and Planck length into this own particle. I'm giving Planck time and Planck length physical meaning. This is, of course, the inverse of Planck time, but regardless, it is uh, inadvertently being injected into this particle. Planck time, Planck length. And when you plug these into this equation here, you get the speed of light for the tangential velocity. So this is, it's obviously a hypothetical particle, um, but this kind of works out nicely in the system that I'm defining for the proton and for the electron. All the particles in my system so far that I've tried to define um, uh, basically follow this model. They follow this model and they all have the tangential velocity of the speed of light. So, uh, so that is it for the tangential velocity. Um, I think this, uh, this video is much better than the previous video I made in the sense that it is, um, it is much simpler. I am now using the, let me go back to here. I am using the circumference of the circle always 
and I'm using the frequency in cycles per second always, as I've always been trying to do. And now I have a, a self-consistent, I have a self-consistent set of uh, parameters and, and I can apply the same logic to different particles. And I also introduced this concept of the relationship between the circle and the wave, which uh, this visual uh, is a nice, really nice animation, a really nice depiction of that relationship. And I think this is very important because the it, what's very important for my model here is that the outer circumference of this circle is, um, is uh, analogous to, functionally identical to the wave length. It has the units of wavelength. Uh, it, it is the parameters are the, basically the Compton wavelength. And so this explains how, there, how Compton wavelength can be a wavelength without actually being a wave. And so I hope this helps. I hope this helps. It helped me to work through the units of 2 pi in my 2 pi or not 2 pi video. This helped me unwind all this and come up with a nice, uh, nice simple solution. This is the tangential velocity of a nice little uh, learning tool here. Maybe this will help you remember that um, this is the tangential velocity of my own particle system. And so, yeah, that's it. I will definitely be back, but um, I think that's enough for now. So uh, ciao for now.